You want to pose with the chair, Scott? Or no? <laughs> no, no. The chair is just fine where it's at. <laughs> well, let's open up, guys. Scott, uh, first and foremost, uh, I guess just give me your thoughts on the main event, uh, Vadim Nemkov retaining. I'll tell you, um, Nemkov to me is the best 205 pounder in the planet in any, any MMA league, including better than the UFC 205er. So I think what you saw today was his speed, his agility, his combinations. He could kick, he could punch, he could take you down, he could defend. I mean, he could do it all. So I think that's what you saw tonight. I mean, Yo Romero, that's, that's a scary guy. And if he punches you or gets on top of you, you're going to be in trouble. So I think what you saw was just the skill level of Nemkov. And um, it's impressive. I mean, the guy is really, really good. Coming into this week, I think with the co-main event, a lot of the eyeballs were on Patricio and his potential ability to, to really make some history here. Um, and perhaps Sergio was kind of uh, the spot that didn't get that same spotlight. So for him to come out here tonight um, kind of – against the tides and, and, and go out and put on such a great performance against the fighter you called the Bellator GOAT. I mean, what did you think of that? I mean, listen, you know, it's uh, speed kills, right? And that's what you saw tonight. And I think that uh, Patricio looked a little hesitant and looked like he was, you know, trying to get in the groove, just couldn't, couldn't get there. Uh, and, um, and, and, and Pettis was throwing nice combinations, good punches, good kicks. I think it was a, a great fight, a very intense fight. And uh, I, I clearly think that he won the fight. So I think the right guy won. And, and uh, you know, he'll go on to fight mix, which will be another amazing fight. So uh, we look forward to putting that together sometime in the fall. But um, I think you just saw the skill level of Sergio. This guy has beaten, you know, some really good f talent at, that, at, at his weight class. So Horiguchi was, you know, was, was, was the start of me saying, oh, this guy is really special. And then when he, uh, you know, fought tonight, I said, wow. Pitbull is dangerous because with one punch, he could change the game. But I just thought that he worked it in and out really, really, you know, really nicely and had side to side movement. He just, I just, he, he was just too fast. And then the, the two fighters that came out on the losing side of the equations, Joel and, and Patricio, I guess, where do you think they go from here, each of them? You know, I don't, uh, I, I think with, the one thing with Patricio is we had to sit down and have a conversation. Are you going to stay? At 35, do you want to go back to your normal weight at 45? He might feel more comfortable at 45. Maybe that's where he should, he should be because if he fights, you know, if he fights at 35, he's going to run to speed all the time. So maybe he might be better off at 45. And, uh, you know, listen, it's no, it's, it's no secret. I'd love to have him fight Aaron Pico at some point uh, in the 45-pound weight class. But uh, it's going to be up to him. You know, he's, he deserves to have a, you know, like the next move is going to be up to what he wants to do. And, and we'll take it from there. As far as Joel Romero, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, he, he took a lot of punishment tonight. And uh, we'll have to evaluate and see where he, where, he, where he wants to go with his future. So, you know, we'll probably have a conversation with him in the next two weeks. Light heavyweight's kind of in a weird spot right now because Vadim's been do dominant. Uh, Corey Anderson picked up a win tonight. Looking at that division, is there anybody that, that sticks out to you as a potential next challenger for, for Vadim? Yeah, I mean, listen, that guy has been on a tear, and, and he's the best at, in, in that weight class. I know Corey wants to get a shot at him because think about, think about that fight, that first fight. Corey was on his way to win that fight, and he stopped because of the, of the cut, and he told Frank Trigg, Hey, he's cut. They went, you know, to the, the cards, and then he, you know, they stopped it. Went to the, you know, and it didn't work out for him, right? But uh, the second fight didn't work out. I think that Nemkov uh, studied a lot of film on Corey and, and made some good adjustments on Corey. Uh, so, does it deserve a rubber, a rubber match? I think it does. But when and where, we'll, we'll see. Last one for me. Uh, at the beginning of tonight, there was a little bit of a delay. Um, it mm -hmm. seemed like there was an ambulance issue or something. Could you just kind of give us from, from your perspective? From yeah, the you know, I mean, that was something that was really surprising. And I think that, um, you know, that's something I don't want to say that's something that, that's, that's not true. It's, I can only, I, I'm only hearing some rumors, but I want to get all the facts. And then we, you know, we can get back to you on, on that one. Thanks. Anybody else? Just a quick one for me, Scott. Uh, what do you, I know you guys try to come to Chicago as frequently as possible. Just here in November, obviously Daniel James didn't get the win and the crowd is going crazy for him. How do you feel about continuing to book events here in Chicago? Yeah, listen, um, again, there's been such a rich history of fights here in Chicago. 
to me, it was sort of way back when Fedor fought Brett Rogers, you know, here in town. And uh, we've co consistently come, came here, I think, in the last two or three years. I think we've been back here when COVID ended and, you know, for the first time in this building. But uh, we've, we've uh, done a, a fight, couple of fights at the All-State Arena. And it was, it's always been a good city for us. And I really, really uh, think the fans enjoy the, having the big fights here. And they support us, as you can see. So I think this is the biggest crowd we've had uh, since the Fedor fight when he fought Brad Rogers. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to see some good support you know, from the Midwest. I know it was already mentioned earlier, but for you, seeing a guy like Sergio come in off such a long layoff, face a guy that everyone coming into this week was calling the Bellator GOAT, what does it say to you about where he is at this stage of his career to go out and put on a performance like he did tonight? You know, the one, the one guy I think you should really look at is Duke Rufus, right? Uh, when he was, um, you know, when he was going into training camp, Duke said, this is how we're going to fight him. And he's, he creates a strategy for uh, Pettis, and, and he followed that strategy. And I think that I call him the chief strategist at the Pettis camp, right? I go, hey, there's Duke Rufus, the chief strategist. Because the, there's certain people like Javier Mendez, like, uh, like Duke Rufus or, you know, different trainers in different areas, they just have that ability to, to find a weakness in their fighter and, and the other guy and then try to exploit it. And I think that Duke is one of those guys that just has that knack to, to figure it out because all of his experience, whether it's kickboxing or MMA or whatever, he's been doing this for you know, 30 years. So uh, I, I think that that's, that's a guy, as long as he's in his camp, I think he's going to create a strategy. He's going to execute it, and he, he, did it, he did it very well tonight. I know Patchy spoke to us earlier, and obviously Sergio earlier. Sergio said he liked October and November. He's got a wedding in next February. I know you mentioned this fall. Does that all kind of line up with your timeline? Listen, if they want to fight in October, November, we'll, we'll get it on. You know, I, I want to see that fight personally. So it's going to be it's going to be a great fight. I, I'm really looking forward to that fight. Thank you. Hey, Scott, how are you? A uh, couple things. So last time um, you guys were just working out the CBS deal mm -hmm. and now consistently hear nothing but rumors about acquisition this. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you keep business as usual and put on amazing events like tonight? Yeah, I mean, listen, we have, we have a great roster of talent and our job is to put on the fights. And, you know, Viacom, when they went out looking for a financial partner, uh, it was, um, you know, they have to open up to everybody. So, uh, you know, they, they're talking to several people how that nets out. We'll see. In the meantime, we have a job to do, and, and we're putting on some amazing fights. Not just, I mean, I think it started last year when we were in Ireland. We j I just feel like this company's been on a roll. You know, I know we're trending tonight, I think number one, number two, and, and, uh, and, and in socially, we're just crushing it. Uh, and I think about this year, it started with the Fedor fight, great event in LA. Uh, then in, uh, I think we went to uh, Ireland and we had Amazon fight. And it's just been, you know, San Jose, Hawaii, here and then you know we go back to japan and new year's eve last year in japan i mean i feel like we've just been knocking it out of the park and that's something i think we're you know that's what we do that's what this company does so we're going to keep doing it and then we'll see what happens no you absolutely uh have been hats off to you and the whole team it's it's all the, it's consistent questions people can always talk about the different title shots speaking of that though one of the big storylines was uh patricio's opportunity to be the first in all organizations to hold three belts Obviously, I know we mentioned uh, you don't know what's next for him, but do you see that opportunity coming somewhere down the line where he wants to try again for it? You know, I, I, if he wanted to, we'd have the conversation with him, but um, let's just wait and see what he says. Again, I don't want to speculate what he's thinking, um, but uh, we definitely would have a conversation. He deserves to have that respect, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. The kids at 35 are, are young and fast, and, and you know it's 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 maybe like I said maybe he's fight, better off at 45. I do know this fight meant a lot to him. You could tell after the after the fight how disappointed he was. Um, but you know like I said, speed kills, and on to the next one because this guy this guy is a warrior. Like he said, this is all I know how to do is go fight. You know, and the guy has done so much for this company. Um, his accomplishments even before this fight have already been you know, great for this company. And he's, he's been such a, uh, a great, you know, our, 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 our Mount Rushmore of, of Bellator. He's been, a, he's been the face of this company for so long. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be up to him. So, again, don't, don't let this one fight take anything away from him because, you know, if he would have done it, sure, he, he would have been a whole different level. 
uh, of success, I think, in accolades you know, across, across the MMA world. And it'd probably be one of the greatest accomplish accomplishments that any fighter could have, could have won. But it didn't work out. And he's still, you know, two-bill champion. Don't forget, this guy, this kid is a guy that has fought everybody. He has never turned anybody down. He's always looked for the toughest test. Uh, and and uh, you know, it's this. They're just they're just they're just tough guys, man. It's it's really impressive to watch those guys fight. Yeah, and then last one for me. I used to talk to Nemkov or Corey, but we obviously have. And and Corey said that after the fight, he was. Give it, kept going after, give me next, give me next. And then uh, Nemkov actually mentioned a, a not, he might he was thinking about moving up to heavyweight. Mm. Is, is that something you'd entertain? And is this the first you're hearing about this? Yeah, this is the first I've been hearing about this. So I think Nemkov probably want to stay at 205 because, you know, Fedor was at heavyweight. Now that Fedor's retired, maybe he wants to move up. I think 205 pounds is a very good weight class for him. And he looks really good. He looks fast, explosive. He's got, you know, an all-around game. Fighting a headweight might might be a little bit different, but if he wants to test himself, listen, we're we're here to have that conversation. Love it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Scott, regarding the like a possible sale or merger or anything like that, is there part of you that in this process, as those discussions are going on with with Viacom, that gets I guess protective of your brand and and, and this version of Bellator that you've built since you've been here and. and makes you think, God, I kind of don't want that to happen because this is my baby and my team's baby. Well, listen, you know, it's, uh, this is a business, right? And Viacom owns the company. And uh, we've been involved in a lot of the conversations with the different potential, mm -hmm. uh, you know, investors. Viacom is going to keep, you know, uh, you know, ownership too. They're not going to just, you know, look past it and move on. They're, they're definitely going to be uh, involved. So, you know, again, when, when, they decide who the partner is going to be, then we'll have those serious conversations and see how it works out. How much of the the, the history of this kind of thing with with the Strike Force merger, uh, you know, merger with the UFC, mm -hmm. and you being part of that, do you look back on and go, God, that was only ten years ago, and I remember, you know, well, you I, know, I don't want to say how that worked out, but you, you know, I, I, all I say is like, look, we are doing great things with this company, and when you build value in a company, the way we've been building value mm -hmm. and the great fighters that we've been building. You know, people can knock on the door, you know, and so that's all that happens. That's just natural for any business that is growing, that has, you know, shown the kind of talent that we have. We are in the fight business, right? One thing we we can do is we can promote fights and we can sell tickets. So we can get sponsorships and, uh, you know, we have TV deals all over the world. So when you have a successful business like that, you know, again, people are going to people are gonna knock on the door. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting, interesting to see what happens. And I, last for me, uh, I know you said you think maybe Patricio's best bet is to go back up to 45. Before this fight, I feel like the thought was that if he won the 35 belt, that he wanted to go down to 25. So, I mean, that's a huge oh, difference. Yeah. Um, mm. Do you think that he still would consider that idea, given the, like the Horaguchi situation? Mm. Or do you think, uh, just leave that alone, go no, to 45, you, guy? I, I can tell you what I think, which, which I think he should go back up to 45. Mm. And again, you know, the, these young kids coming up are, are, you know, speed kills and they're super fast. And um, to me, you know, you've been so dominant at 45. Uh, let somebody come up to your weight and come test you out and, and see how it works out for them. But um, again, you know, he's one of the fighters in this company that will always sit down and listen to because he deserves that respect. He's been around a long time. He's accomplished so much. You know, we're going to give him that uh, that conversation when the time comes, and we'll let him tell us what he wants to do, and then we'll say our input, and then mm -hmm. we'll figure it out. Cool. Thank you, sir. One more here. Yeah, just one final one for me. Um, you guys were on CBS earlier this year. Any talks of a potential second CBS show, or is that just going to be a once-a-year thing for you guys? Yeah, you know what? That opportunity came about um, out of the blue. It actually wasn't really even planned on the schedule, but they had an opening, and they asked us, and we took it. So uh, if they ask us again, we'll definitely, we'll definitely do it. But uh, that's something that's unknown at this point. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Anybody?